We'd now like to use our small signal model for the transistor um, to analyze some actual circuits. There's a few steps that we have to follow. The first step when analyzing a circuit is to short circuit the capacitors and the DC power supplies. Remember that our coupling capacitors are chosen so that they provide DC isolation. That is, they do not allow DC to flow from one circuit to another. Also, those capacitors are chosen so that at the frequencies that we're interested in amplifying, the impedance of those capacitors is very small. And um, we replace them with short circuits because we're assuming that the impedance of those capacitors is very small compared to the other components that they're connected to. And we also know that a DC power supply looks like an infinite capacitor, so we short that out as well. We then redraw the circuit so that it's as simple as possible. Right? The simpler the circuit, the less chance we'll have of screwing it up. We then insert the small signal model for all of the transistors, and then we analyze the circuit, whatever that means. It usually means we're interested in things like the small signal voltage gain, the input resistance, the output resistance. There's a few other things like the current gain and the power gain, but we're not really interested in those this year. So let's see how we might put this into practice. Here's a circuit. This is uh, an amplifier that actually works. You can build this and it will amplify signals no problem. So we've got a potential divider bias network here. Um, we've got our collector resistor. We've got our input uh, coupling capacitor that couples the AC input voltage to the base. We have our output coupling capacitor that subtracts the DC voltage at the collector so that we can have an AC voltage across the load RL. So the first step is to short circuit the capacitors. So C2 is replaced with a piece of wire. C1 is replaced with a piece of wire. And VCC is replaced with a piece of wire, which means there's a piece of wire that goes from VCC down to our reference rail here. And when we do that, we end up with this circuit here. Right, so we've got rid of our DC power supplies. That means that our AC signal is now driving everything. Right? The energy for our uh, whatever is happening in the AC world is coming from this circuit here. Uh, sorry, this, um, this source here. All right, so we now have to redraw the circuit as so it's as simple as possible. Well, there's a few simplifications we can make. Do you see that RC is in parallel with RL? So this end of RC and RL are connected together at the collector terminal, but so are the other ends. They are also connected together. So RC and RL are in parallel. Also, R1 and R2 are in parallel. They are connected here, but you can see that the other ends are also connected. So we can replace uh, these two resistors with a single parallel combination. We can combine RC and RL in a single parallel combination. That's about all we can do. And when we do that, we end up with this circuit here. And this one's quite a bit simpler. We've now just got three resistors, the transistor, and the AC source that's driving the circuit. So there are no more simplifications we can make. So our job now is to replace the transistor with its small signal model. And sometimes people come unstuck doing that. So if you're in any doubt about which terminal goes where, just write on the circuit what the relevant terminal labels are and just make sure that they go to the correct terminals of the model. So when we insert the model we end up with this circuit here. 
and you can see that the emitter goes to the emitter resistor, the collector goes to the parallel combination of RC and RL, and so on. Everything else looks fine. And now all we have to do is analyze the circuit. Now, which model do you put in here? GMVBE or beta IB? If I don't tell you which one to put in, then you can choose whichever you prefer. Uh, more often than not, I'll give you a clue as to which one to use. All right, so why don't we have a go at analyzing a few actual circuits and we'll see how that goes following these four steps. All right, so here's a similar looking circuit to the one we've just been examining um, when discussing the general principles. Uh, again, resistor um, divider biasing network for the transistor. We've got the collector resistor and the emitter resistor. But now we have also what's called the emitter bypass capacitor. So when we short circuit all of the capacitors, we'll be short circuiting this one as well, which effectively removes RE as far as small signals are concerned. RE is still there for DC, because remember at DC, CE has infinite capacitor, sorry, infinite impedance. Um, therefore, um, it doesn't really do anything as far as DC is concerned. Um, but it gets removed when we're when we're doing the AC analysis. So let's see what we can do. The first thing we have to do is come up with the small signal um, equivalent circuit. So we have to redraw this. So let's have a go at doing that. So can I fit all of this in? The first thing we had to do was short circuit the uh, capacitors. So let me just try and draw this. Right, so RE has disappeared because we have short circuited the emitter bypass capacitor. We've still got R1 and R2 and RC. Um, this is our output voltage here. Here is our input voltage, Vn. So that's the first step. Short circuit the power supply, short circuit the input coupling capacitor, the output coupling capacitor, the emitter bypass capacitor. And now we've got to redraw this so that it's as simple as possible. Well, it's, um, it's pretty clear again that R1 and R2 are in parallel. RC is all by itself, but we'll draw it sort of down so we don't have this wire going all around here. There's no load resistor in this circuit, so there's nothing to go in parallel with RC. So let's redraw the circuit. That's it. It's relatively straightforward. Uh, the output is still taken from the collector, so that hasn't changed. So this is still V out. That's RC. This is R1 in parallel with R2, and this is V in. All right, the next thing we have to do is replace the transistor with its small signal model. So let's do that. Um, and we end up with this. So R1 and R2 stay there. Now between the base and the emitter, we've got R pi. So there's R pi. Um, from the collector to the emitter, we've got our voltage, sorry, our current source. And across the current source, we've got our collector resistor. So we've got RC there, V out. I'll just put this as beta IB. There's IB, 
this is r pi this is r1 in parallel with r2 and this is vn so that's about as simple as it can get right um, two resistors on the input side one resistor on the output side r pi and the current source so we're now interested in doing some calculations, for example, working out the ratio of the output voltage to the input voltage, and that will give us the small signal voltage gain. Or we might be interested in calculating the input impedance of the circuit or the output impedance. So let's move on and have a look at those. So here's a slightly neater version of what I've just drawn. And we're interested in calculating, say, the, which will should we do first, the, um, the small signal voltage gain. So we're interested in, say, AV, which is equal to V out divided by V in. Well, let's see what we can do here. Can we come up with expressions for V out and V in? Probably. Do you agree that V out is equal to minus, and I'm going to use the current controlled current source for this one, I think. V out is equal to minus ICRC. Minus because the current is flowing up through RC, therefore the bottom is going to be more positive than the top, or the top is more negative than the bottom. The bottom is already at zero, so we must have a negative there. So V out is equal to minus IC times RC, which is minus beta IB RC. All right, that wasn't so hard. What about V in? Well, uh, V in is equal to whatever this current is times R1 in parallel with R2. But that won't lead us anywhere useful because we will have an undecided current I1. And in order to make things work out, we'd have to somehow express I1 in terms of either IB or IC. So that's not useful. This is much more useful. Vn is, as you can see here, just equal to VBE. And VBE is just equal to IB times R pi. And you see, crucially, we've got an IB in both of these equations, which will cancel out. So we take those and we now substitute them into our expression for AV. AV equals V out, which is minus beta IB times RC divided by IB times R pi. And so the result is minus beta RC over R pi. That's it. That's the small signal voltage gain. Now, it's always a good idea to pause and think about whether this result makes sense. The voltage gain, according to our equation, has to be, you know, it has to obey the laws of physics. We need to do a few sort of audit checks on it to make sure it's okay. The one I like to start with is, um, does it have the right units? Well, beta is dimensionless. RC has units of ohms and R pi has units of ohms. So overall, this thing is dimensionless. So that's good. AV is directly proportional to RC. That sounds reasonable, right? Because if we go back to our original signal, uh, circuit rather, when the voltage here goes up, the base current goes up. So the collector current goes up. But the output voltage is taken across RC. We can see that from here. Right? So when the voltage here goes down, the voltage across RC goes up. So if RC is bigger, then the product IC times RC is going to be bigger. So it seems perfectly reasonable that AV should be directly proportional to RC. The other thing is that AV is negative. Does that seem reasonable? Well, again, it, it does seem reasonable because 
as I just said a second ago, when the voltage here goes up, the voltage here goes down. So if we had a sine wave which was increasing here, we'd have a sine wave which was decreasing here. That corresponds to essentially a 180 degrees phase shift, and that's the same as having a minus sign. So we feel pretty happy with this result. It looks okay to me. And this is the small signal voltage gain. Why don't we now have a go at calculating the uh, small signal input resistance? So the small signal input resistance is by definition the input voltage divided by the input current. The input current isn't shown on here, but it clearly has to be that current there. So let's see what we can do. Rn is equal to Vn divided by In. Now again, we'd like to build up an expression where we can cancel out things like voltages and currents because we're always looking for an expression which depends only on component values, not things like currents and voltages. So let's try and express I in in terms of V in and um, see what happens. Well, I in clearly splits at this node into the current that flows down this parallel resistor branch, R1 and R2. We'll call that I1. The other current is clearly IB. So we could write Rn equals Vn over I1 plus IB. Well, I1 is just Vn divided by the parallel combination, right? So let's put that in here. Vn divided by R1 in parallel with R2. Um, now, what's VB? Uh, sorry, IB. Well, IB is just VN divided by R pi, right? So that would be VN over VN over R1 in parallel with R2 plus VN over R pi. Now we can see that all of the VNs cancel and we're left with an expression which is clearly um, the formula for the parallel combination of R1 in parallel with R2 and then in parallel with R pi. So the final result is R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with R pi. How do we feel about this? Well, dimensionally it's clearly all okay. Did we really have to go to this length? Can't we just look at this circuit and say, well, clearly this is in parallel with this? And in this case, yes, we could have done that. We could have said by inspection, these two resistors are in parallel and we would have gone straight to this answer here. The trouble is that it's not always this simple. And so we're just trying to build up a little bit of experience in doing this more methodical approach. Later on, we might have a resistor connecting the base and the collector or well, there might be some uh, emitter resistor which is going to foul up the approach and we can no longer just stare at the circuit and figure out what is in parallel with what. Something may not be in parallel with anything. Okay, Things aren't always either series or parallel, it's possible to be neither. But in this case it was pretty straightforward and we've got this result here. Okay, it's all going well so far. Shall we have a go at the output resistance? So the output resistance, if you recall, requires that we short circuit the input and apply a notional voltage to the output. And that will drive a current into the output terminals. And we need to um, develop an expression for that. So um, R out. is equal to this notional applied voltage Vx to this um, uh, the, the resulting current that flows when Vn is equal to zero. So the idea is that we apply a voltage source here 
and we will call this Vx. That's going to drive a current Ix into the output terminals. And at the same time, we short circuit the input. Okay, so that's short circuited R1 and R2 and also VBE. Do you see that if the if if R pi is short circuited, then VBE must be zero. If VBE is zero, then IB is zero, therefore IC is zero. So this current source will not be generating any current, which means that the only component that's left in the circuit is RC. So that means that the circuit can be replaced with just this. And it's pretty clear that now R out is Vx divided by Ix with Vn equal to zero and that must be equal to Rc. All right, again that looks okay to me. There's, I don't think there's um, anything contentious going on here. Um, the key to this is recognizing that this short circuited input shorts out R pi, which causes IB to be zero, which causes IC to be zero, basically eliminating everything except the collector resistor. We haven't ended up with anything stupid like R out equals one over RC or, you know, minus RC or anything like that. So we're pretty happy with this. So always audit your results. Always take a moment to think about um, what you've written down. Does it make sense? Does it obey the laws of physics? Have I done anything stupid? Let's have a look at another example. Here's a more interesting circuit. Here we've got what's called a common emitter amplifier again, but this time we've got some feedback from the collector to the base. We've got our coupling capacitors C1 and C2 and we'd like to do what we just did with the previous circuit and that is calculate the small signal voltage gain R in and R out. So the first thing we have to do is redraw the circuit after short circuiting the capacitors and DC supplies. So let's have a go at that. You can keep that previous circuit in your mind while I draw this. Now this is a particularly simple circuit, um, but it's not all series or all parallel. This feedback resistor here is now connecting the output loop to the input loop. We'll see what that does for us. So let's try and do a calculation. Again, here's a neater version of what I've just drawn. Let's start with the voltage gain. All right, so what do we do? Let's just remind ourselves what the voltage gain is. It's the output voltage over the input voltage. Can we just build up expressions like we did last time? Well, last time we just worked out the voltage across RC by multiplying the current through it by the value of the resistance. Well, clearly V out is equal to I1 times RC. Um, but what is R1, I1? Um, does IC flow up here? Well, part of it does, but it's complicated because now we don't have a clear, simple loop here. Some of the current can disappear through RF. So we're going to have to try something else. The sensible thing in my view would be to do a nodal analysis at this node here and see what happens. So let's try nodal analysis. And 
we'll, we'll try it at the node Vout. So here, this is all the node Vout. Um, if we sum the currents leaving this node, we've got I1 plus IC plus IF. So let's see where that goes. So we know that I1 plus IC plus IF equals zero. Um, what's I1? Well, it's V out over RC. What's IC? Um, well, it's beta IB. And what's IF? It's V out minus VN over RF. And that must be equal to zero. Now we could actually make um, an interesting simplification here. And instead of having beta IB for IC, we could make our life easier by choosing GMVBE. Why is that? Well, because GMVBE, VBE is the same as VN. So we would replace this term here with GMVN. Let's do that. So we get V out over RC plus GMVN plus V out over RF minus VN over RF equals zero. All right, so let's just try and collect some terms. So let's collect V out on the left hand side and we'll put V in on the right hand side. So we end up with V out into one over RC plus one over RF equals V in and we'll put a minus one over RF, oops, sorry, plus one over RF there because it's going to be on the right hand side minus GM. Now, do you see that this thing here, that's 1 over RC in parallel with RF. So, let's uh, write it like this. We've got V out divided by RC in parallel with RF equals, I'm just going to reverse the order of these two things. Um, we've got V in times minus I've screwed that up. V in, sorry, minus V in into GM minus 1 over RF. And you'll see why I do that in a minute. And now I want to get V out over V in, so I'll multiply both sides by the left-hand side denominator, and then I'll divide both sides by V in. So AV, which is V out over V in, is minus... GM minus 1 over RF times RC in parallel with RF. All right, well, good Lord, how do we audit this? Does this make sense? Well, dimensionally, everything looks okay. Um, I've got Siemens, Siemens, ohms. So Siemens times ohms is dimensionless. The voltage gain is dimensionless. So that looks okay. RC in parallel with RF. Well, you know, at least one end of them is connected together. Uh, the maths has conspired to somehow make them at um, give us this expression. This doesn't mean that they really are in parallel, right? It's just um, uh, the, the details of the mathematics. I've pulled the minus sign out the front here because I know that the voltage gain should be negative. Why is that? Well, just because we keep dealing with these common emitter circuits. So as the voltage here goes up, the current goes up, the collector current goes up, the voltage across RC goes up, 
so the collector emitter voltage goes down. So when this is going up, this is going down, which corresponds to a negative voltage gain. So I'm okay with this. I think we'll stick with that. But you can see there's no guarantee that things are going to work out pretty or elegant, such as this example here. All right, what about the input resistance? Let's crack on. The input resistance Rn, Rn equals Vn divided by In. All right, well, here's In. So Rn equals Vn over In. That's Vn over Ib minus If. Now, do you see that we can't just stare at this circuit and by inspection write down what the input resistance is? It's not like RP is in parallel with RF or in parallel with RF in series with RC. It's just not that complicated. It's just too complicated to be able to, to, to figure it out. We're going to have to just use our mathematical tools to, to nut it out. All right, well, let's forge ahead then. Vn divided by Ib. What's Ib? Well, Ib is Vn over R pi. Um, what's minus IF? Well, IF is V out minus VN divided by RF. So minus IF is VN minus V out over RF. So I'm going to write that as VN minus V out over RF. Hmm, well, we can't quite cancel all the VNs, can we? Right, these guys can all cancel, but it's not going to cancel with that. But we can write V out in terms of Vn, can't we? Because we know that V out is equal to the small signal voltage gain times the input. So that's minus Av V out, uh, Vn rather, over Rf. And now when we divide top and bottom by Vn, we end up with 1 over... 1 over r pi plus 1 minus av over rf which means that this thing is equal to r pi in parallel with rf over 1 minus av well that's nice it's does involve the um, voltage gain here but if we substitute our expression for the voltage gain, we're going to end up with a hideous mess. I prefer to leave it like this. Is it possible for this thing to blow up? Like if AV is equal to 1, we're going to end up with RF over 0, which is infinity. Well, no, because remember AV is negative. So that's always going to come out to be a positive number down there. Dimensionally, it looks okay. We've got ohms in parallel with ohms because AV is dimensionless. So again, this is looking okay. Good. Let's do one more thing. Let's see if we can work out the output resistance. Okay, reminding ourselves, R out equals Vx over Ix with Vn equal to zero. Here we go, there's Vx, there's Ix, and here is the input shorted out. Okay, now the um, input is shorted out, uh, that means that VBE is equal to zero. If VBE was equal to zero, then IB is equal to zero, therefore IC is equal to zero. 
and therefore we if we were to redraw the circuit we just have this here is RF with IF flowing down there uh, here is RC with I1 flowing down there and here is VX driving a current IX in there. It's pretty clear that R out is equal to VX over IX with V in equal to zero. That must be equal to RC in parallel with RF. Quick audit check, dimensionally it's fine. I don't see anything wrong here. Um, we've shorted out VBE, IB has to go to zero, IC has to go to zero, that just leaves RF connected to ground in parallel with RC. So we can write that down by inspection. Okay, that's transistor small signal analysis.